So here we are in the corner of um, our kitchen and we're going to do something different today. We're not going to talk about cameras and lenses and that kind of stuff. Um, I thought we'd do a proper photography project. It's the beginning of January, uh, truly wrong. We're in lockdown again. So no chance of getting out to do any engagement shoots, boudoir, obviously weddings are completely off. Um, so if you've got a camera and you're looking for something to do, um, other than sit and watch Netflix, uh, maybe this will be um, be useful for you. What I'm going to do is um, a still life a photo. Now, this isn't a speciality of mine. My work is photographing people, but I've done a few of these in the past and I've got some ideas and we'll be talking about some camera techniques and a bit of editing and, and it's, well, I hope you find it useful. Let me just get this ready and uh, we'll look at what I'm going to do. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the plan is we're going to do still life and I'm going to use some, some cheese on our cheese board, um, some wine in our glass, oh, some homemade um, crackers set on, I think I've got an, uh, an, an old rustic kind of chopping board and, and that, that's going to be what I'm going to use. I did think about using um, some vegetables, uh, maybe an onion cut in half or uh, a butternut squash, but we ate that a couple of days ago so we can't use it. Um, that kind of thing, fruit, um, apples, orange, I've got some tomatoes here as well, I'll put with this. Um, but decided on this, there's anything you want to, you can come up with. It's, it's the look I'm going for and the process of getting there that I'll explain during this video. Um, so, what we've got. Why here, first of all? It's a fairly dark corner, which is what I want for the background. Because I want the background, uh, first of all, this this is an old um, a, a curtain which I bought about ten years ago, but just never got used. Um, it's got this kind of fairly modern looking pattern on it, but I love the colour. It's the right sort of earthy sort of um, background that I want, but I don't want this modern uh, pattern on it. So we're going to shoot in a way that gets rid of that pattern. That will be just blurred. It looks like be really dark because we've got some light coming from the window here. So the subject is going to be in the light, the background will be in the dark. We should get the sort of look that, um, that I'm after. Because, because I want my subject to be nicely in focus, all of it in focus, but I want the background blurred, we're going to use focus stacking. And um, I'll, I'll go through how we do that, what we need to do, uh, and then we'll process that in Lightroom and Photoshop. I'll show you how to do that. Um, it, it's not something that I do very often, but I think for this it's going to be useful. Now, as for other lighting, I'm hoping that the natural light from the window will be enough to light our subject and give some interest. We've got, as you can see, well, I hope you can just, maybe you can't, but you'll see soon. We do have some shadow. Uh, the bottle here just about has some shadow and it's certainly got a light side and a darker side. Um, and that's as much contrast as I want. I don't really want any more than that. I don't want to have to use flash. Um, if I use the reflector, that would simply fill in the shadows, which I think will take away from the character of the photo. So let me set this up and um, we'll see what we can come up with and I'll come back then. I've now got my, my set up. Um, I like the light, uh, it looks fine and I've just noticed, sorry, I've got all marks all over this. Um, just get those off. I'll explain the camera set up now. So, I'm using my D780, 
because I, I could use the D700. Uh, I'm not going to use anything of the D780 that the D700 hasn't got, I don't think, apart from focus peaking. That, that's about it. Um, it's just that I can tilt the screen on, on the D780 and you'll be able to see the screen a little bit easier. So I've got the camera set to um, manual and I've chosen, let me just check, it's now 125 ISO, f1.4, 50th of a second. Um, gives me a nice exposure. Focusing is manual. Um, on, on live view on the D780, um, I've selected, I'm not sure if you can see it, a small tiny square there is my focusing method. So that when I press the um, magnify button, we're gonna magnify that part of the image. Uh, and that, that's another thing which the, uh, I'm not sure that the, yeah, so I think the D700, D700 does just the same. So I can now focus on the very front of my board here. No, it's not a board, it's a, a it's an oven stone. Um, so that's going to be dead in focus. As you can see, well, hopefully you can see, the, the, the uh, crackers and the tomatoes are completely out of focus. So we're going to do focus stacking so that I can get the whole of the shot in focus when we combine these um, images in Photoshop. The background hopefully will be completely blurred. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to set the timer, two second timer delay, so that when I press the shutter, there's no camera shake. So, uh, got the focus square on the tomatoes and we'll just, wrong button, sorry. We'll just magnify that and I'll focus on, I'm gonna focus right on the front. In fact, we'll focus on the crackers. And then we'll focus a little bit further out on the tomatoes. And we'll move the focus point again to the cheese board, to the cheese. So now I can focus on the cheese. And what's beyond the cheese? Um, uh, well, we'll do that again, but I'll focus on the far side of the cheese, the best I can. And the focus speaking does help because it just, you probably can't see it, but uh, it is just, because this is really critical. It's just focused on the back edge of the cheese. And we should be done. I, I think that'll be enough. So we've now focused from from this. <sighs> Apologies for that. Um, uh, I got cut off about 30 seconds before I wanted to uh, because I'm recording in HD um, on my phone because I'm using my D780, um, so I can't use that for video. Um, and, and, and it cut off. What I was saying was we've now got shots all the way in focus from right at the beginning there to right to the end there. Um, I think there's five, maybe six. Uh, we're going um, into Lightroom, we'll go onto the computer, put them in Lightroom, uh, and I'll show you how we stack those together, how I edit the resulting photo, and uh, hopefully we'll get something that uh, is an interesting photo. Let's go and have a look. So here we are in Lightroom. Let us import um those photos and i apologize in advance in case my computer is slow uh, whenever i'm recording the screen in spite of having a reasonably fast computer it seems to grind to a halt so here we are we're gonna i'm not gonna bother adding those to a collection um because i'm just gonna edit them in lightroom but what i should have mentioned um back when i was actually doing the um the recording was that we could have used the automatic uh, focus stacking in the D780, which would have um, done exactly the same as I did manually. The reason I did it manually is that um, not all of you have got uh, a camera with focus stacking, 
and just to demonstrate that you don't need anything clever you can do it manually okay so um i'm going to import these okay i think we finally yes we finally imported those photos right so all we do now is we select all of them uh, right so we just select all of these so um, shift and left click um, sorry we need to no I can do it here um, edit in and let me open as layers in Photoshop this is going to take a moment or two so I shall pause the recording so as you can see we are um, we're in Lightroom now and it's importing each of those photos as a new layer in Photoshop. Um, by the way, if you don't have Photoshop, um, I believe, I can't tell you which, but I believe there are uh, photo editing um, software around, free photo editing software, uh, which will allow you to do the same thing. I can't tell you which, but I'm sure that about two years ago I did um for someone else um ha do a bit of research um and two years ago i i'm sure i did find something so hopefully there is something around now if not and you don't have lightroom and photoshop uh i pay monthly i think it's about nine pounds so what was that maybe 11 or 12 dollars um for the use of that monthly plus camera raw and bridge and something else as well I think that I don't <laughs> that I don't actually use um, but I think for, for ten pounds a month um, certainly for myself um, as a professional photographer it, it's absolutely invaluable I couldn't I, I couldn't work without it okay I think that is now imported everything uh, we'll just get rid of that silly grid right um, what we now do is shift and left click to select all the layers we go to edit we do auto align layers now although that was on a tripod and we want it to be auto um no, not worried about that uh just ju just the auto is, is clicked there uh, although we were on a tripod if the lens the sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 art lens that i use i don't think has any issues with focus breathing so as I move the focus point some lenses will do what's called breathing which means it actually changes the focal length of the lens fractionally uh, and obviously as something as uh, as, um, as critical as this that could affect the images if you if you stack them they would still appear out of focus uh, not because they are out of focus, but because the focal length has actually changed minutely. It's gone from 50 millimeters to 51, and that's just changed the actual image slightly. Um, I don't think the Sigma has any problems with focus breathing, but certainly there are lenses out there. I think my most of my other Nikon lenses do have focus breathing. So we've now auto aligned the images, and what that should do, we should see once that's finished. If we did have any issues, we would have got some some white marks around the side. So I guess that's that's done. That 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 that's fine. So what we can now do is we can go to image and we can do auto blend layers. Uh, we don't want to make we don't want to create a panorama. We want to stack the images, and we simply click OK and again wait for photoshop to work its magic and what we should be ending up with uh, at the end of this is an image that's not only sharp at the front here but it's sharp all the way through to the back of this um, circular oven stone okay that appears to have finished so i will now do um, save and that should save that back into Lightroom as a single image and then we can have a look in Lightroom let's pop over there so it's now appeared in uh, back in Lightroom and I'm just waiting to get to develop okay I'm going to do a couple of things to this the first thing we're going to do is to crop 
not to make it smaller, but I've just noticed that the, the, the lines on the table here aren't quite vertical, and it just looks a bit weird, having said that. No, that's... We'll undo that. Uh, let's try just making sure we've got the back of the table level. Yes, no. Okay. Um, and the bottle, is that upright? Hmm. I'm still not convinced. There's not always a simple answer to these things. Okay, so we've now got the bottle upright, and I think that is probably the best thing. Um, let's have a look closer in. So we've got 100% crop here, and that is definitely sharp. <laughs> the crackers are definitely sharp. Tomatoes are wonderful. Cheese is sharp on the front edge here and right the way across to the back here. So I think we've achieved the objective. Maybe the the um, the oven stone isn't quite sharp at the background here, but uh, I think we can live with that. Okay, colour wise and lighting wise, uh, you can see the from the histogram we're we're a bit on the dark side here. So maybe I should just lift that a little bit. I think that's that's plenty. I don't want to go much more than that. Um, now the background. I'm not quite happy enough with the background. Let, um, it's a little bit lighter than I really wanted. So let's see if we can just get away with. Sorry, and and also around the front here, it's a bit brighter than I really wanted. So we'll just do some vignetting, and I like that. Now this this background, I've just got to get that a little bit darker. Uh, and and also a little bit more faded. Um, so let's create a brush and we will go for lots of no sharp, <laughs> a very small amount of sharpening, reduce the texture and the clarity and also the exposure a little bit. And we'll just see what we can do with that. I like the um, the kind of vignetting on the exposure. So I like the slightly bright centre there. Um, so we're now do another brush, exactly the same, but we'll just have one where we don't change the exposure at all, but we just slightly lose those patterns a bit more. Okay, that looks better. That's it was. I found it a little bit distracting uh, earlier on. Now the light on the bottle here. Um, it's just a tad dark. So what happens if we lift the shadows? We just lift the background mainly. So I don't really want to do that. So I like it about there. But I think we we'll just want to brighten up the bottle. So we'll go for just a light one, just very slightly, and lift the shadows as well. Yep, I'm happy with that. Now what else can we do? I don't think that needs an awful lot more doing to it. Okay, I have spent another five minutes just playing around with the, the background a bit more. I um, still wanted it a bit darker and a bit more um, out of focus, so I've done that. I've also cropped it to 5x7, which is my uh, my preferred size for most um, photographs. And I think, I think that's now finished. So we will export that. So here it is as an exported photo. So... <laughs> I hope that's given you something to think about. Maybe you can do something yourself. Maybe, maybe you can do something better than this. Um, uh, I think in the future I will do some with just maybe vegetables and that kind of stuff. And also, I think maybe next week um, I'll do another video where we go from this sort of old master kind of look um, with sort of the dark background 
uh, to a very modern, ultra modern stock photo type shoot with something like a, a lemon or an apple or something like that, uh, which will be so different to this, uh, it'll be worlds apart. Um, so tune in for the, ne ne that next one in a few days time and uh, enjoy your photography. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.